Hello YouTube. Bane666 here. Sometimes you come across something so crazy, you seriously have to ask yourself if it's a parody or not. I contemplated this numerous times while reading the XY feminist list of male privileges. I do think it is a serious post, based on the fact that many of the 69 points fall in line with common feminist thinking. But I am here today to point out some of the crazier ones, and trust me, it's going to take more than one video. But who is XY Feminist? Wow! It seems that someone has been drinking copious amounts of the feminist Kool-Aid. Anyway, let's see what he has to say about his male privilege list. Okay guys. You are going to have to strap yourselves in for this one, as we are about to take a long ride on the crazy train. Stopping all stops on the way to Radfem Central. So let's get stuck into it. Patriarchy. 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 <laughs> oh no, the feminists have found out our secret plan to oppress women with long nails. Quick, let's run and hide. Isn't it great how feminists can make crazy claims, with absolutely no evidence or proof? Anyone, anywhere, viewing this video that can show that plagiarism laws favor men, please provide your proof in the comment section. Same goes for male discoveries. This is just obviously nonsense. These type of feminists make the Illuminati conspiracies sound credible by comparison. Just when you thought the, one in three women will be raped, myth, was bad enough, now the crazies are claiming that more than half the female population are sexually abused before adulthood. No citations of course. And also no mention of male children who are abused, oh no, because it only ever happens to girls, right? Of course males, on average, being stronger than females, on average, has nothing to do with millions of years of evolution producing sexual dimorphism in our species. You know, like what we see in many other species. Oh no, it's because boys get to eat more food, and girls are left to starve by their evil patriarchy mind-controlled parents. I'm guessing this includes single mothers, households with only female children, and lesbian parents as well. How deep does this conspiracy go? In this world there is stupid, and then there is crazy. Welcome to the fuzzy zone in the middle, where the two meet, shake hands, and have a couple of beers. Ah, the good old, men are not judged by their appearance argument. I guess that means that this guy, 
is just as likely to get an office job as this guy. Oh no, a parent would not be a factor at all. What about these guys ladies, would you like their numbers? Or would you prefer this guy's number? I'm guessing their appearances will have no effect on your decision. Just like boy bands sell records based on their talent, and not on their appearance, right? No, males are never judged for their appearance, it just never happens. Phallic looking food? Really? That's actually a concern to some people? Maybe the world would be a better place if more sausages were shaped like vaginas. Just a thought. And males are never sexualized, no, never. Admittedly, women are sexualized in the media more than men, but that does not mean that it never happens to men. A simple fact is that, sex sells. Most males like looking at sexually attractive females, and most females like looking at sexually attractive males. And of course some people enjoying looking at sexually attractive members of their own sex. I do not see anything wrong with any of this, it's natural for the vast majority of the human race to desire other members of the human race sexually. And it's not surprising that advertisers, TV and movie studios, and the music industry take advantage of this. I mean, have a look at this J-Lo video clip. I have muted the sound for your comfort. I understand she has reversed the stereotypical gender roles in video clips, but if you think this was done to just make a point, and not to appeal to the sexual desires of her fans, then you are crazy. This is nothing new by the way, look at this clip from Madonna from the 80s. Is she seeing these men as complete, complex human beings? Or are they just props there to adore her? Clearly she is the one with the power and control. They are only there to worship at her feet, and shower her with gifts. She does not care about their thoughts, life goals, or emotions. And you know what? I do not have a problem with this, because it's just a video clip, it's just a fantasy. Next. Wow, just fucking wow. Really? Men try to make sure that the murders of women are unsolved and undocumented? Really? Wow, just fucking wow. And men take credit and resources from women? Really? Wow. As for the last part, where oppressed men will get priority care, well, what can I say? More and more evidence is being presented all the time that males are domestic abuse victims as well. Some studies put the percentage between men and women at 50-50, others have male victims making up a third. Yet are one-third to one-half of the resources dedicated to male shelters, helplines or whatever? The answer is, not even fucking close. And many feminists actively work against males getting help, by excusing violent female offenders, and misrepresenting the percentage of male victims. Fucking amazing. Next.
Let me think, is there a group that actively silences its critics? I wonder. List of the things no. that we're working towards. Now, if you would shut the fuck was, up for the like 50th billion billion time. Time. Um, I want to thank Ryan Brown for inviting me to speak here and the Canadian Association for Equality for sponsoring my talk. Uh, it's my hope that as a result of my talk, a few of you may decide to... Okay, you know, it's the signature... It's the signature of a totalitarian ideology to attempt to quash dissent. So every time you interrupt, you're merely showing your repressive tendencies. You're not showing anything about your virtue. Let's forget it. So you think this is a victory? Yeah, why are you so frightened of hearing a, an opinion different from your own? You're pathetic. Yes, clearly it is the poor. Poor feminists that are being silenced by the evil MRAs. Amazing. If men are incapable of seeing their own privilege, because they are privileged men, then would women not be incapable of seeing their own privilege, because they are privileged women? Or does having a vagina give you special privilege detection powers? Uh, has tweeted out, says for the record, oh, wait, at Colbert on. Report is not controlled. As a white controlled. man, you don't really hang, hang, hang on, hang on, Sylvia, I'll come to you in just a sec. Uh, for the record, Colbert Report is not controlled by Stephen Colbert or his show. He is at Stephen at home. Sorry for the confusion. Colbert himself has responded to some of the criticism on Twitter. Hashtag cancel Colbert. I agree. Just saw at Colbert Report tweet, I share your rage. Who is that, though? I'm Stephen at home. Uh, Sui, you were just going to jump in. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that I feel like it's incredibly patronizing for you to paint these questions this way, especially as a white man. I don't expect you to be able to understand what people of color are actually saying with regards to cancel Colbert. He has a history of Sui, making jokes. Sorry, being a white man doesn't, give, doesn't prevent me from being able to think and doesn't prevent me from being able to have, uh, have thought, reasoned perspectives on things. I, don't, I, I didn't give I know, up, I didn't give up totally my right to be able to have an intellectual opinion. conversation when I was born. I know, but uh, well, well, white men definitely feel like they are entitled to talk over me. They definitely feel like they're entitled to kind of minimalize my experiences and they definitely feel like they are somehow exempt and so logical compared to women who are painted as emotional, right? No, no one's minimalizing your, your experiences. No one's minimalizing your right to have an opinion. It's just a stupid opinion. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a misunderstanding of what of what You just called is. my opinion stupid. You just <laughs> called my opinion stupid. That's incredibly unproductive. And I don't think I'm going to enact the labor of having to explain to you why that's incredibly offensive and patronizing. Explain. I just told you I wouldn't enact that labor. Ah, the privilege of judging others based solely on their race and gender. But only if you are judging white males, right? Because we all know that all white males are exactly the same, right? This is bullshit. I really am sick of feminists and social justice warriors judging the validity of someone's argument. Based on their gender and race, but only if you are white and male of course. This is just a pathetic way of trying to silence someone because you have no other argument. Not only is it bigoted, but it's also fucking childish. There may be a lot of people I disagree with, but I don't dismiss their arguments based on race, gender, shoe size, sexual habits, how tall they are, what type of car they drive, or whether they are a dog person or a cat person. These are irrelevant to their argument. Next. You know, I tend to make a lot of videos about rape, and rape culture, not because I like the topic, but because it's important to counter feminist rape hysteria, and to discuss the exclusion of male victims by so many people. I have been planning another video countering rape culture claims by feminists, I have gathered the information needed for it, but have put off putting it all together because it's not a pleasant topic, and I do get tired of talking about it sometimes. 
I do think it is a serious topic that needs discussion, but countering bullshit like you have just read from the XY feminist, is draining after a while, because people like XY are not interested in helping victims, they are only interested in demonizing all men, and turning all women into victims. If their concern was stopping rape, or helping victims, they would spend less time and energy turning rape into a gender-specific crime, and more time and energy discussing all victims and all perpetrators, regardless of their gender. They are not concerned about victims, just gender-biased propaganda. Otherwise why wouldn't they talk about male victims, and female perpetrators? Including the high number of female-on-female -female sexual assault victims. I think the fact that they exclude female victims when the perpetrator is female, is very telling of their actual motives. It seems that the victims do not count, unless they can be used to demonize males. I am not going to go into any more detail here, as I have done so in many videos in the past, and as previously stated, we'll be putting another one together on the topic in the near future. Next. Oh boy. Okay first off, comparing breast cancer to testicular cancer is very misleading. If I wanted to be dishonest and misleading, you know, like a feminist, I could compare prostate cancer to vaginal cancer. As there will be an estimated 880 deaths from vaginal cancer, and 29,480 deaths from prostate cancer. But it's a dirty trick to compare a gender-specific cancer with a low death rate to a gender-specific cancer with a high death rate, and cry conspiracy. And I don't need to resort to dirty tricks, as I deal with facts. So instead of comparing apples with oranges, let's look at two gender-specific cancers which are comparable, and then look at their funding to see if anyone is being short-changed. I will even throw in a non-gender-specific cancer as a control. I should note that breast cancer does also affect men, but considering the vast majority of the people who die from it are female, and considering the XY feminist himself used it as a female cancer, I think it's more than reasonable to refer to it as a female-specific cancer. After all, the fundraising is definitely marketed that way. I will be using US stats provided by the National Cancer Institute, I will provide a link below. The three cancers I will compare are, breast, prostate, and lung, as a non-gender specific control. These three cancers have the highest death rates. Let's start with number of new cases and deaths per 100,000. The number of new cases of breast cancer was 123.8 per 100,000 women per year. The number of deaths was 22.6 per 100,000 men and women per year. These rates are age adjusted and based on 2006 to 2010 cases and deaths. The number of new cases of prostate cancer was 152.0 per 100,000 men per year. The number of deaths was 23.0 per 100,000 men and women per year. These rates are age-adjusted and based on 2006 to 2010 cases and deaths. So according to these stats, more males get prostate cancer, and slightly more males die of prostate cancer. But the numbers are very very close. Let's compare them to the control. The number of new cases of lung and bronchus cancer was 61.4 per 100,000 men and women per year. The number of deaths was 49.5 per 100,000 men and women per year. These rates are age adjusted and based on 2006 to 2010 cases and deaths. So there are nowhere near as many new cases of lung cancer each year compared to the other two, yet the number of deaths are just over the other two combined. Let's look at the next group of stats. Lifetime risk. Based on the most recent data, approximately 12.3% of women will be diagnosed with breast cancer at some point during their lifetime. 
Based on the most recent data, approximately 15.3% of men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer at some point during their lifetime. So males are slightly more likely to develop prostate cancer, but once again the numbers are very close. Let's compare it to lung cancer. Based on the most recent data, approximately 6.9% of men and women will be diagnosed with lung and bronchus cancer at some point during their lifetime. So around about half the rate of the other two. Let's now look at the data for prevalence. Remember these are US stats. In 2010, there were an estimated 2,829,041 women living with breast cancer in the United States. In 2010, there were an estimated 2,617,682 men living with prostate cancer in the United States. So the difference is about 200,000 cases, which is not a large number considering the population of the U.S. Once again the numbers are very close. Let's look at lung cancer. In 2010, there were an estimated 399,431 people living with lung and bronchus cancer in the United States. These numbers are nowhere near the other two cancers. So going by these statistics, breast and prostate cancer are very similar in the number of cases, treatability and the number of deaths. Lung cancer on the other hand, has nowhere near the number of cases, but accounts for around half the deaths from cancer. Thus making it far more dangerous than breast or prostate cancer. Now I would think, that if lung cancer kills around the same number of people, as breast and prostate cancer combined, and if breast and prostate cancer have similar rates of death to each other, then lung cancer would get around the same rate of research funding as breast and prostate combined, and breast and prostate research should get roughly equal funding. That would be fair right? The biggest killer should get most of the funding, and the other two which are roughly equal should get roughly equal funding. But is that the case? Breast cancer gets $602,728,719. Prostate cancer gets $265,094,495. And lung cancer gets $314,637,661. I will let you come to your own conclusions as to whether there is a patriarchal conspiracy to deny women proper medical treatment. Well, that's 10 out of the 69 in the list done. My next video will spotlight the runners up to the top 10. Those that did not make the top 10, or the runners up list, will be featured after the credits of both videos. Until next time, don't drink the feminist Kool-Aid.